College DEI boss fired as DEI offices get canceled in schools nationwide. Diversity, equity, and inclusion offices are starting to get forced out of colleges. Today we see it in Nebraska, Kentucky, and North Carolina. And this guy, Marco Baker, just lost a $320,000 a year job as Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Inclusion. What was it he was doing for three hundred and twenty grand a year? Nobody knows. That's one of the reasons he's got to go. UNL to close Office of Diversity and Inclusion as part of reorganization. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln will dissolve its Office of Diversity and Inclusion and eliminate the Vice Chancellor position that directed its efforts. UNL Chancellor Rodney Bennett said the change, which was announced to students, faculty, and staff in an email, comes as part of a broader restructuring of the executive leadership team for the state's largest public university campus. Quote, I fully grasp the weight of this decision and its implications, Bennett wrote, but a centralized approach to this work is no longer right for our institution. The change means the position currently held by Marco Baker, UNL's first and only vice chancellor for diversity and inclusion, will be eliminated at the end of the calendar year. Marker's total salary and benefits is nearly $320,000. He had an office of five people that he was in charge of as well. Five people he was responsible for, and they pay him that kind of money. The $750,000 annual budget of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, which was previously subjected to budget cuts implemented last year, will also be reabsorbed into UNL. The five staff members who worked in the office will be allowed to apply for vacant positions across campus. In an interview with the Journal Star, Bennett said the nationwide trend that started 10 to 15 years ago of colleges and universities establishing offices of diversity and inclusion and hiring administrators to lead them has shifted. But I think during that period, perhaps a goal was met and those offices have served the campus as well, said Bennett. But there's certainly been a shift. Offices focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, commonly referred to as DEI, have been closed at public and private universities across the country in recent years as their efforts have come under fire from lawmakers in conservative states. Because these offices don't actually accomplish anything. All you do is create division with the students, give people unrealistic expectations, cost a ton of money, and make taxpayers wonder, why are we paying for people like you to push a political agenda at the school, at a public school, pay for with public taxes. Completely ridiculous. A handful of states, Alabama, Florida, Iowa, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming, have banned DEI offices and programs in higher education altogether, as conservatives and normal people said those efforts have raised racial and gender identities over individual merit, which of course they have. It's really not even a debate. And as a result, they've created their own kind of discrimination along the way. I wonder what kind of discrimination that is, where you only provide special services for people of certain skin colors. I mean, obviously, there's a little discrimination there. You need to discriminate to even figure out who you're going to provide services to. Oh, you don't look like I can give you services, but oh, you over there and you over there, sure, you look the right way. You've got the right skin color. We can provide services to you with publicly financed institutions, you're really going to keep doing that? Of course they can't keep doing that. The backlash gained strength after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that race-conscious admissions at public and private colleges and universities were unconstitutional. And that opened the door for challenges from several groups against diversity programs on campuses. You would think people would have enough decency to realize you can't just tell people that have no control over what they look like or what gender they were born with, that they're not entitled to certain resources that other people are entitled to. It's totally inappropriate. It's completely against American values. While Nebraska lawmakers have introduced legislation to prohibit diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at the state's public institutions, as well as to block any public money from being used in those offices, those bills have not made it to the floor yet for debate. And over in Kentucky, from APNews.com, University of Kentucky to disband diversity office after GOP lawmakers pushed anti-DEI legislation. The colleges and the universities will sometimes try to get ahead of the legislation. They'll shut down an office or make some changes, 
hoping to try to get the momentum out of getting the legislation passed. It gives them a little bit more flexibility sometimes with trying to sneak their programs back in. What they're most afraid of is having their funding cut off as a result of violating some legislation and violating actual laws. University of Kentucky will disband its office promoting diversity and inclusion efforts in response to questions from policymakers that its focus on identity has stifled political discussions, according to its president. Because when they're pushing identity, they're only pushing one political view. And it is political. They deny it, but of course it's political. In the school's preemptive action, units housed in the closed office for institutional diversity will be shifted elsewhere on campus including into a newly created Office for Community Relations, UK President Eli Capilouto said in a campus-wide email. The restructuring won't result in job losses, he said. Capilouto stressed that the school's core values remain intact. To protect academic freedom and promote a sense of belonging for everyone on campus, regardless of background or perspective. Well, they don't want that. They only want belonging for certain people on campus. And that's not what the DEI agenda is about. The agenda is about making certain people feel more comfortable and entitled and other people feeling less comfortable and not entitled. He went on to say, quote, but we've also listened to policymakers and heard many of their questions about whether we appear partisan or political on the issues of our day and, as a result, narrowly interpret things solely through the lens of identity. In so doing, the concern is that we either intentionally or unintentionally limit discourse. I hear many of those concerns reflected in our discussions with some of our students, faculty, and staff across our campus. So yeah, of course, because like it's obvious. Universities nationwide have been grappling with the same issues, with many of them shutting down these offices. Not that this guy wasn't worth 300 grand a year, I just don't know what he was doing to earn it. And over in North Carolina, UNC Charlotte announces closure of three DEI offices reassigns 11 employees. And reassigning these employees is not that big of a deal. There should never be a problem reassigning people to another office. They just can't do their DEI nonsense in the other office. UNC Charlotte has announced sweeping changes to its diversity, equity, and inclusion programming, including eliminating three offices. The school's Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Office of Identity, Equity, and Engagement, and the Office of Academic Diversity and Inclusion, all closed as part of the move, though university officials say no one was laid off as a result. The shift comes after the University of North Carolina system in May repealed its diversity, equity, and inclusion policy, when all but two members of the UNC System Board of Governors voted to roll back the policy originally adopted in 2019. Attacks on diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, often referred to simply as DEI, began gaining traction in early 2023. Conservative politicians and normal people targeted policies intended to attract and retain candidates of color at universities, corporations, and government agencies. This was a political, communist-style rollout of pushing political agendas inside institutions that had any amount of power. Push the agenda. Control what people can say. Control what people will do. You know, in communist China, there's always a member of the Communist Party on every board of directors. Now, do you, do you think that's a problem, maybe? Can you see the similarity where you're pushing a political agenda, a centralized political agenda that tells you what you can say, what you can do, who's going to get opportunities, who's not going to get opportunities, who's going to be treated fairly, who's going to be given extra opportunities, who is not going to be given any opportunities. It's a political commissar type of structure. Incredibly dangerous, destructive, inappropriate, and against everything that's American. Since 2023, 85 anti-DEI bills geared towards programs at colleges have been introduced in 28 states, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education. While proponents of DEI programs say they're a strategy to correct injustices from decades of exclusionary practices, opponents say they're discriminatory towards white Americans and violate the First Amendment. UNC System President Peter Hahn said the change was motivated by the university's duty to remain neutral on political matters. But we have well-established laws and policies that prohibit discrimination, protect equal opportunity. Hahn said in a written statement this May, we will continue to uphold those responsibilities. 
Yes, if anyone was already truly being discriminated against before they brought these DEI offices into colleges, businesses, government offices, everywhere, they would have an actionable claim under the law. That was never what this was about. This was about extending the power through a centrally controlled political ideology. What will the changes look like at UNC Charlotte? The UNC system's previous policy required the employment of a diversity and inclusion officer at each of the system's 17 schools and the creation of a UNC system diversity and inclusion council. It's been replaced with a new one titled, quote, Equality within the University of North Carolina. As long as it doesn't say equity within the University of North Carolina, we're going in the right direction. The new policy, quote, requires offices and positions at all system institutions to comply with institutional neutrality, refrain from compelling others' speech, and refrain from promoting political or social concepts through training or required beliefs. Specifically, it does not allow any institution in the system to have offices that focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. No diversity statements required to try to apply for a job, or to get tenure if you're a professor, or to even speak at one of these universities. According to the new policy, the university may not promote a particular set of concepts related to race and sex, nor include them in any types of training for employees. The new policy still allows faculty full discretion in decisions around research design and course material. It does get complicated when you try to regulate the courses. And as they find it's better off to get the professors on track with like limiting tenure and things like that, scrutinizing who's allowed to teach at the universities, than it is to go in and start messing with their university programs. Students and student organizations are still allowed to engage in political and social advocacy as long as they do not speak on behalf of the university. Quote, UNC Charlotte is committed to creating a culture of belonging for everyone from every background and identity, according to a university spokesman. Quote, the university's care and concern for its students is unchanged, as are student organizations, which help students build community and identity with others. If students want to run around campus and try to persuade people to follow their crazy political ideas, that's completely normal for college campuses. Nothing inappropriate there. They could even try to form a cult. No problem. It just can't be part of actual school administration or required activities that force people to become part of your new cult. Money previously allocated to diversity, equity, and inclusion, we could also say wasted on diversity, equity, and inclusion, will now be diverted to student success, which includes improving graduation rates, degree efficiency, and student mental health as well as well-being. The university will continue to permit identity-based mentoring, programming, and support as long as they align with student success initiatives. And in Nebraska, this just came out. We've got some feedback on what the community is saying about the shutdown of the diversity offices. And this poor guy who's not getting his 300 grand anymore. Internal Vice President of UNL Student Government said he was one of many surprised by the news. He said students understood the national and local pushback against diversity, equity, and inclusion, but thought UNL administrators were still supportive. He went on to say he wasn't warned and no students were warned of the closure of these diversity offices. He said he didn't even get the email announcing that the offices would be closed. He also said he didn't get a chance to weigh in. Well, it, yes, but it doesn't matter what you say. And if you're not even on a CC list, then you kind of get the idea that this is what they needed to do. It wasn't something they were going to check with you on to see if it was okay. But he went on to complain, quote, the notion that this work can be decentralized, generally stripped of its funding, raises concern about the way in which it can be executed not only across colleges, but across divisions and units at the university. Yeah, it's not going to be executed anymore. The program actually is being executed. They're killing it. It's not going to continue because it was a nonsense waste of money, a way to get this guy 300 grand a year. But beyond that, it served no legitimate purpose. Ashani Idiram, and yes, I did pronounce that correctly, a senior business administration major and student body president at UNO said some of the concern comes in classifying the changes as reorganizations. 
Yes, it's just polite speak for we are getting rid of these offices. We can't justify them anymore because they are completely silly and the legislators are coming after us. That's what the reorganizations are. It's not a legitimate reorganization where you're trying to restructure and continue the operations. The operations are being ceased. She continued complaining. She said a large part of belonging is physical space. So closing offices leave some services more inaccessible. Belonging? Just go to school. Do some networking with other students because if you're in a good college, those might be the students that you're doing business with a couple of years down the road. Or they may be able to share opportunities with you or you opportunities with them. College is not a place that you're supposed to feel belonging. You need to kind of make that work on your own. And she just won't stop. Quote, all these decisions seem surface level, but the more you dig into it, the more you realize that these resources don't support just 100 students, they support 15,000 of us. For the students that felt a sense of belonging because there was a diversity office telling them that they were special every day, giving them opportunities that weren't available to other students. Well, they're gonna have to make that happen on their own and better that they learn that while they're still in college while they're still getting an education and not out in the real world, because the real world is a rough place. You're gonna to have to work hard. You're gonna to have to have allies. You're gonna to have to have some networking. You're gonna to have to be passionate about what you do and great at what you do. If you're going to get ahead, it's not gonna work just based on your skin color, your gender, your sexual preferences, or your religious affiliations. Actually, you can do a lot of great networking with your religious affiliations. But that doesn't mean you're not gonna to have to deliver the goods. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.